This is ReactCast's episode 13, server-side rendering with data fetching and routing. I will start this episode just where I left in the previous one, so if you haven't watched episode 12, you might want to watch it first. The link is on the screen. Also, I'm running mostly the same code from the previous episode, with two notable exceptions. First, I've changed my main component, now it's a news component. I also added an API endpoint. It just returns a hard-coded JSON with some news. In a real app, this data would come from the database, but for this example, this will be enough. I'm not going to use this API right now, but I just wanted to mention that it exists. Again, I'm rendering the news component. Let me run my start dev script and test this on the browser. Good, I have my wizard news page where I can get informed of the latest trends in the magical world. This page came pre-rendered from the server. When React mounted on the browser, it verified that the markup matches with its virtual DOM and skipped the first render. React also added front-end interactivity, so for example, I can click here to change the sorting by publish data or upvotes. But I don't really have any actual news here, just a few placeholders. They are hard-coded on my news component, not being fetched. So let's work on actual data fetching on the server. On a regular React application, we would usually do data fetching on component did mount, but component did mount only runs on the browser. And because I'm doing server-side rendering, I want to fetch the data on the server itself. You know, to send the page completely pre-rendered with all the news. The reason why component did mount doesn't run on the server is because I'm using render to string, which runs synchronously and on a single pass. It doesn't actually mount the components, neither waits for asynchronous operations such as data fetching or even set state for that matter. So here's what I'm going to do. Before rendering to string the news component, I will fetch the data from the API. Let me install isomorphic fetch, which provides the same fetch API that browsers have, on the server. Okay, I'll import it. In sequence, I'll fetch from my server slash API slash news. Then the response is a JSON file, so dot JSON. Then I will get initial data back. Let me wrap everything in this dot then and pass this initial data as props to news. Inside the news component, instead of using this placeholder, I can actually initialize the component state with props.initialData while checking if there is props.initialData. Let me test this. Great! Now I have a list of actual news. And if I show the actual source code, I can see everything came pre-populated from the server. But there's a catch. Right now, there's no interactivity on the browser. If I click on the sorting options, nothing happens. And if I pull my console here, I have these nasty errors here. Here's what's happening. Although the markup did came pre-populated from the server. When React mounts the component on the browser, it doesn't have the same data on its state. It builds a virtual DOM that doesn't match with the pre-populated markup that came from the server. So to fix this, when I get the initial data from the API, I not only need to make it available to the component on the server, I also need to make it available somehow to the component when it reaches the browser. There are quite a few possibilities here. The simplest is just to open a new script tag on the HTML that I'm sending to the browser and add a global variable. I'll call it window.dunderInitialData. And it's going to be equal the same array of news. Let me stringify it. Back on component, I'm initiating the local state when it's on the server. I will also make sure to initiate it on the browser. So let me do a quick reorganization here. I'll move this declaration outside. I'll also move set state outside. And in the else case, I set initial data equals to window.dunderInitialData. 
I will also use this opportunity to delete window.initialData. Not only this, we will allow the passed state to be garbage collected, but it also avoids conflicts with other components when we add routing to this application. Let's test again. Create page came pre-rendered from the server, and on the browser, React takes over and adds interactivity. Before moving to our next topic, let me make a small refactor here. Right now, I'm fetching the list of news before rendering the component tree string, well, because I don't have any navigation in place. The only thing I render are the news. But in a few moments, I'm going to start working with routing, and the user will be able to render different components. If the user is not going to the news route, I don't want to make him or her wait while I fetch the list of news. Also, other components might have other fetching needs. To prepare for that scenario, I will refactor this code to make it reusable. Well, I prefer that each component expose its own data fetching needs, so let me do that with the news component. I will cut this fetch method from here, and in the news component, I will declare a static method request initial data. Let me paste the initial fetch here. Static methods are used for placing utilitary functions for a given class that do not belong to their instances. Cool. Back on the server component, I can now call news.requestInitialData, then get the initial data and render to string. It looks like a small change, but this will be flexible enough to handle initial data fetching requirements for any components when we have routing in place. So with this refactor in place, let's begin working with routes. I'm going to use the most popular routing solution for React, React Router, currently in version 4. Let me install it here, npm install React Router DOM. Right now, I only have a news component here in the news folder. I'll add a new home component. I already have the files here, so let me just drag them. I will also create an app component, which will be the new entry point for this application and contain the routing code to decide whether to render home or news. But before working on the app component, let me also define a routes configuration file. React Router has this concept of dynamic routing, which means that a config file is not always necessary. But because I'm doing server-side rendering, I will need to access the routes more than once in different places, so it needs to exist as a separate configuration file. I will import home from home, and I will import news. Next, my route configuration is going to be a simple array, so const routes equals an array. Each route will be defined as an object. For path slash, the component is home. I also need to say exact true, otherwise every path beginning with a slash would fall here. I will add a new route, path is slash news, and component is news. Let me export, default, perfect. I have now both components, home and news, and the route configuration file. Let me work on the app component, the new entry point of my application. Import React from React, import switch and route from React Router DOM, and of course the route from dot slash routes. Const app function returns a switch component. The React Router switch makes sure that only the first route that matches the current path is used. Now, what I'm going to do is generate an individual route tag for each route in my config file. So, routes.map, route and index, and I will return a route with a key and copy all of the route properties, you know, the path, the component, etc. And that's it for routes. Well, if you know React Router, you may have realized that there's something missing here. The router itself, a component that should wrap all individual routes, something like this router. But the thing is, the React Router library actually provides different kinds of routers. Some of them work only in the browser and some in Node. 
Instead, on my browser specific file, I will import browser router from React Router DOM. Ah, let me get rid of this new component here because, well, now I'm using app. But most importantly, let me wrap it into browser router. On the server, well, let me first again import the app component here and change news for my app component entry point. Good. As I was saying, on the server, I also need to wrap the app component into some router. But instead of using browser router, I will use a static router. Import static router from React Router DOM. Back down. Let me wrap it here. Static router. The static router doesn't try to get the URL automatically as the browser router does. You have to provide it with which route it should render. In my case, it's going to be whatever route the user requested, which Express gives me access in rec.url. The static router also accepts a context object. This object will be passed as props to the render component and it can be used to communicate with it. For example, I originally passed the initial data as props directly to the news component. Now I'm going to pass it through context. Let me create a const for context. I'll add an object with initial data and on the static router, context equals context. Now I need to update the news component since it expected to receive initial data directly as props. Now it comes from props dot static context, which is the prop that the static router injects. All right, looking good. There are still a few things missing, but we can test what we've got so far. If I request the main route, the server gives me this home page. If I check the source code, I can see that it came pre-populated. I'll make a new fresh request to the news route. Good, the server sends a news page. And if I check the source code, you can see that it also came pre-rendered from the server. But we are not done yet. There are a few rough edges. To begin with, the server will always fetch the news data, even if the user navigates through other route that doesn't need this data. So let's fix this. I will import match path from React Router DOM. This method allows me to find which route matches the current URL without rendering it. Let me also import the routes file. I'll create a const to hold the current route. It works like this. I will call all of my routes dot find and test each individual route with match path passing the current URL and the route. Next, I'll call request initial data on whatever is the current routes component. Now, some components may declare a request initial data static method, but others may not. So to be safe, let me check if the method exists before calling it. Finally, instead of calling news.requestInitialData, I'll call requestInitialData on the current routes component. Now, I need to get a promise back from requestInitialData, and some components might just return a value or don't implement requestInitialData at all, so I will wrap it into promise.resolve, which will convert any returned values into something I can call .then. Looking good. I can now even delete the news component from here. Let me see if this still works. Great, if I request the main route, it still works without fetching the news. And if I request the news route, and again, notice that I'm making a fresh new request, not clicking on the link. Cool, it works and comes with data. <laughs> you might be asking yourself, why the hell I'm not clicking on the link to go to the news? and instead always making a new fresh request. Well, that's the second rough edge we need to smooth. If I make a request directly to the news route, the server will fetch the data and send a pre-populated news page as expected. But if I request any other route and then click on the link to the news, this won't make a request to the server. When we navigate to the news component using the link, React on the browser just switches the component and re-renders the DOM. Let me put this in another way. Whenever I request this app from the server, the component that appears first comes pre-populated. 
but any further navigations happens locally on the browser. If the user requests home and then navigates to news, news will not come pre-populated. It needs to fetch its data locally from the browser. Well, that's very easy to solve. I'll open the news component and do a regular data fetch on component did mount. I already mentioned this. Component did mount is not called on the server, so I can safely use it to do data fetching on the browser when it doesn't come pre-populated. I'll do a regular fetch. Uh, wait, I can even use the static request initial data that I already have in place. News dot request initial data, then set state news. I actually want to make this fetch only if the component doesn't have any news in its state. And now, if I click on the link, the navigation happens locally and the news component asks for the data it needs. In the end, what I did here was making sure that the news component fetched data only when needed. If the user visits my site and never opens the news page, it will never fetch its data. And we are done. We created a server-rendered React application with routing and data fetching. Using Redux would be very similar. Just remember that on the server, every new request can come from a different client, so everything should be stateless. In case of Redux, make sure, for example, to recreate the store on every request. In fact, you can find a version of this code using a Redux store on GitHub. Alright, but before wrapping up, I have three very quick tips. The first one, calling json.stringify here can make your application vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks and code injections. Solve this by installing a library such as serialized JavaScript. I will install it, import, and change JSON stringify to serialize. Tip 2. I have source maps set up in my webpack configuration file for both browser and server codes. But note, won't load nor use source maps automatically. Solve this by installing source map support. I will import source map support from source map support. I will also call source map support dot install, but only if this is running in development environment. And for tip three, bundling node projects with Webpack works really well, but there are a few adjustments that you need to do here and there to have the best results. Like for example, bundling only your own source files and not the files in node modules. Well, because node can do this by itself because it has its own native module system, and you will end up generating a much smaller bundle file containing only your code. Let's do it quickly then. npm install webpack node externals, also as development dependency. On the webpack configuration file, require webpack node externals, and in the server section, add externals and array of node externals. You just watched an episode of ReactCasts. If you have questions about the fonts and tools that I use, head over to the frequently asked questions on GitHub, github.com slash casiozen slash reactcasts, where you can also get the source code and suggest new episodes. Also, special thanks for the Full Stack Academy of Code for supporting this episode. Check them out at fullstackacademy.com. See you in the next episode.